have our ingredients ready. We've got strong white flour. We've got softened butter. We have caster sugar, two free range eggs, baking powder and sultanas. Should be something that everybody has at home. If you don't have sultanas or you just want to change them, you can swap them out for any other dried fruit that you've got. So cranberries, raisins, apricots, or if you, even if you don't, if you don't fancy that, you could lose the sugar and put some cheese in. So 100 grams of whatever you want to add in for your flavor of your scones. Okay, so our next job is to set the temperature on the oven. So our recipe says we need to set the oven 200 degrees Celsius. So on here, I'm going to turn my little dial around to 200. Make sure you have an adult with you when you're doing anything with the oven children. We need to measure our flour and it says 450 grams of flour. So I'm using my scales making sure my scales are on zero before I begin and I'm going to go to 450 now on my scales I've got 400 I've got 600 so I know the big line in between is going to be 500 and if you're very good at maths you might know that halfway between 400 and 500 is going to be 450 so where I'm aiming for with my flour is halfway between 400 and 500 which will be 450 grams. I'm nearly there now, I'm at 400, so I'm just going to be really careful and check my scale and just put it in slowly. And there I am at 450. The flour goes into our bowl. And then we're going to measure the butter. So the butter we need 80 grams. Now I know that my block of butter has 250 grams. So I'm going to estimate where I think 80 grams are. So I would estimate half of my 250 would be about halfway of my block of butter, which would be 125. So I know I need less than half of my block of butter. So I'm going to estimate a little bit less than half and weigh it and see if I'm right. So on my scales, again, they're definitely at zero before I begin. I can see I've got 200 grams here. So I know this next dark line between zero and 200 is 100. And I know that my little tiny lines go up in 25 grams. So 25, 50, 75, 100. So I'm looking for it to go just past the third little tiny line. I'm a little bit short. So my estimate wasn't quite right. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more into Okay, so I can see now that that has just gone past the 75 grams and I'm quite happy that that is around 80 grams. You might have a digital scales at home, so it might be that yours look a little bit different. Whichever you have will be fine. I'm going to add the butter to the flour. It says that I need to rub the butter and the flour together with my fingers to create a breadcrumb-like mixture. So when I do this, I'm squeezing the butter between my fingers with the flour. So lifting it up with butter and flour in my fingers together and I'm rubbing it between my fingers. I bet that feels very nice. It does feel very nice. I love the feeling of yeah. flour. It's quite nice, isn't it? You've got to keep lifting it up as well and then dropping it, don't you, yes. when you're rubbing it? So by lifting it up like this, I'm getting lots of air into my mixture which means my scones will be lovely and light and fluffy so we're going to keep going like that until we have a breadcrumb like mixture so that's when all the butter has been rubbed into the flour so now we can see all the butter has been incorporated and rubbed through and we have a mixture which is crumbly 
like the breadcrumbs described in the recipe. I've washed my hands and we are ready for the next step. So our recipe says that we need to add the sugar, the eggs and the baking powder and use a wooden spoon to turn the mixture gently. So first of all, I'm going to measure out my sugar. This is 60 grams of sugar. So again, with the scales, we're going to check that it's on zero. And as I said earlier, I now know that each tiny one on my, each tiny line on my scale is 25 grams. So two tiny lines will take me to 50 grams and I would like just a little bit more than that to make 60. Add my sugar. Our next ingredient is baking powder and this recipe needs five teaspoons. I'm using measuring teaspoons here and I'm going to level them off with my finger so that I know that I've got an exact measurement. The baking powder is going to make our scones rise and make them nice and light and fluffy. And it's really important that we use an accurate amount when we're measuring this. So that's two. Mix my dry ingredients together now before I add my eggs. And I'm leaving a little well in the middle. This is just a hole in the middle where the eggs are going to be cracked into. We ask for two eggs. So we're going to put two eggs. Little trick, if we crack two eggs together, only one will crack. I wonder which one will crack. It's that one. So this one hasn't cracked. So, to put my two thumbs inside, pull it apart. Egg goes into the middle there, into my well. So I've made sure I've got no eggshell in there now. Just going to wash my hands again because I've touched raw egg. So now I've washed my hands, we're going to mix together our dry ingredients with our egg. ingredient is sultan and we're adding a hundred grams so again on my scales I now know definitely on zero and I know that 100 grams is halfway between zero and 200 so my darker line there and I'm just going to gently add the sultanas until it gets to a hundred grams okay so adding the sultanas in now it is the fun bit where I get to get my hands in so I'm going to use my hands to bring together the mixture with the sultanas. And you want the sultanas all the way through the mixture, don't you? We do, so okay. everybody gets a fair share. Yeah. Sultanas are all mixed in now. Our last ingredient is milk. The recipe says 250 millilitres, so I'm going to measure out 250 millilitres. My jug here is marked in millilitres and there are a thousand millilitres in the whole jug. So we go up from 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. So I need 250, there's my 100, there's my 200, there's my 300. 250 is going to be halfway between 200 and 300. So there is 200, slowly, slowly, till I get halfway, which will be 250. Now the recipe says 250 millilitres, but depending on your flour, you might not need it all. So we're going to add about half of that milk and mix it in and see whether we need more or less. I think this might just need a little bit less than 250 millilitres. So I'm not gonna add the whole of the milk. I'm going to leave a little bit and see how that goes first. You just want it so it all just comes together in a nice... We do, because we're going to roll this out with a rolling ah, pin. I see. So it doesn't want to be too wet like a cake mixture. It needs okay. to be... needs to come together into a solid ball. Great. Okay. Okay, so next we're going to flour our surface and turn the dough out onto the table. So I've popped my dough onto the table with some flour. 
I'm also going to add a little bit of flour to my rolling pin and on top of the dough just to make sure it doesn't stick and we're going to roll from the centre out centre back then we're going to turn our dough 90 degrees from the centre rolling out again from the centre rolling back to get our dough about two and a half centimeters thick which is about what we have here then we get our cutter and we're going to place the cutter try and place it near the edge of your dough to get as many scones out of one roll as possible press down lift it up we can just put one round on the baking tray just like that We'll carry on doing the same thing until we've used up our dough. Also, right now, my I've noticed my um, ring is getting a little bit sticky. So if I dip it in the flour, I get a little bit of flour around there. It won't stick as much the next time I do it. And it's just a little trick. Leave a bit of space between each one because they will grow in the oven. Because of the baking powder, yeah? Because of the baking powder and the egg that we added earlier. Yeah. So I'm going to squish this bit back together, make it into a ball again. And I might just add a bit more flour to my board and to my dough just to stop it sticking again. So this time there's only a small amount, so I don't need to roll it as much as I did the first time. So again, try and make it around the same depth. And I think I might just get two or three, let's see. So that last one there. I think, Mr. O'Rourke, we'll just have a wonky one. Okay. All it right. doesn't need to be perfect. That's the chef's one, around. isn't it? It is. That's for us to test later. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. All right. So then our last step is to pop it into the oven. Okay. So my oven is nice and hot because we popped it on before we began. I've got my oven gloves on. Really important that we use them because the oven is going to be really hot. And if you, I've got Mr. O'Rourke to supervise me, but you need to have, make sure you've got a grown up with you at home because. We don't want anyone getting burnt fingers. Because when you open that oven door, it's very hot, isn't it? It is. So when I open that oven door, I can feel the heat coming off yeah. it. So using my oven gloves, popping it in, closing it up, and we need to pop those in the oven for 15 minutes. We'll keep an eye on them. We're going to be looking through the glass door there just to see when they're golden and risen and ready. Minutes are up. Let's have a look again. Oven gloves on, it is going to be really hot in there. This is probably a job for grown ups. You don't want to be burning your fingers. So, opening up, having a look there. This is very exciting. To <gasps> the wow. Perfect. They look lovely, don't they? That. So, I'm going to pop these onto a cooling tray and they're going to need to cool for a few minutes before we touch them. They look fantastic, Mrs. Course. So I really look forward to seeing what creations you can um, imagine and send. please do send in your pictures. I look forward to seeing them.